A paddle wheel is used to stir two kilograms of water initially at 200 degrees C and 50% quality until the pressure is 20 bar. So think of a container with a paddle wheel coming across and the paddle wheel beats and churns up that water that's inside. Continuing to read, the water is contained in a rigid tank. So this tank doesn't expand like a balloon, it's rigid. There is no heat transfer from the water and the effects of motion and gravity can be neglected. The dead state temperature and the dead state pressure are given. So for the steam as the system, determine a couple things. What is the final quality of the steam? So we think about the initial state one and the final state two. The initial state, just to help categorize or put information down that's given in the problem statement, is at a temperature of 200 degrees C and a quality of 50%. The state two, we don't know the temperature, but we know the final pressure is 20 bar and we don't know the quality, we're asked to find the quality x at state 2, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and I want you to organize your thoughts and not numerically give me the value of quality, what you're asked to solve for, for part A, but show me how you would do it, okay? Okay, this is what I recommend. You make a list of all the properties you know anything about. Almost just put the list down from memory. You want to talk about thermo? Give me some properties in thermo. How about temperature, quality, pressure, uh, specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy. Okay? Those, that's a pretty good list, and sometimes the list goes a little longer, but that's a pretty good list. And now you say to yourself, over here, pressure, temperature, 2, quality at 2, specific volume at 2, internal energy at 2, enthalpy at 2, entropy at 2. These are all at 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And those two up here, T1 and X1, really fix the state. Could I not get uh, P1? How would I get P1? It's, that's equal to P sat at T1. And I can look in the book and I say, okay, the steam table, 200 degrees C, the saturation pressure is 15.5, if I wanted to put a number to it, bar. See, that's what I'm thinking. I got two independent intensive properties. The temperature and the quality allow me to find other properties. How would I find V1 if I wanted to find V1? What type of equation would I use? Would I use the equation that it's V sub F plus the quality at 1 times V sub G minus V sub F? Yeah, that's right. How about if I wanted internal energy at 1? Is it U sub F plus the quality at 1? U sub G, that looks like a V sub G. U sub G minus U sub F? And the same with H and the same with S. So let's put S sub F plus quality 1, S sub G minus S sub F. Okay. I just showed you how we use two properties to get the other properties for state one. But I need to know another property for state two. Hey, you're not in the class and you already passed it. <laughs> I can... Oh, you're going to ask? Go ahead. Well, if I beat this with the egg beater, do you think the temperature will stay the same even though the pressure went from 15.4 bar to 20 bar? Um, when we beat this, was there some liquid on the bottom and some vapor on the top? Is that what this looks like? A system with some... And by mass, not by volume, by mass... How much of it, what percentage of it is liquid and what percentage is vapor by mass? 50. 50% by mass. Not by volume, because the liquid is so dense, it's much smaller volume contained in the bottom. And most of the volume is vapor. 
to have 50% by mass. So when we beat it, you could beat it so vigorously and so long that it could all turn to vapor, but it's probably still some liquid and some vapor. True? Okay. Uh, but what property, what property over on this list under two, state two, can you determine or can you work to get so that it now fixes the state and then you can get the other properties? The specific volume. And why the specific volume? Because of this word in the problem statement, it's a rigid tank. What does a rigid tank mean? Like a balloon, it's going to blow up and get smaller and bigger? No, no, no. Fix the volume. There's no mass coming in or out. So the total volume is fixed. The total mass is fixed. The specific volume is constant. Now, it's not isobaric. That's constant pressure. It's not isothermal. I'm giving you a little improvement on our vocabulary, right? Not isothermal. It's not isentropic. It's iso Coric, something like that, isochoric. We don't use that word often, but it's constant volume. So this is V1 is equal to V2. This and this fix the state. How would I find? How would I find the other properties at state 2 if I need them? Well, it asked me to calculate the final quality of the steam, X2. What is X2? Is it V sub 1 minus V sub F divided by V sub G minus V sub F? Is that, is that what it is? Sure. And so you, now you can f find X2. And that's how you find the answer. I'm just going to mark it over here. The answer to part A. All right. So now we know X2. You can go and get U2, H2, S2, N. Even T2, what is T2? What you're going to find is this definitely is in the two-phase region. You find that the quality at state 2 using this approach is about, let me look at this number here. It's uh, right at 0 0.6409. What happens if my math showed me it was 1.2, 120% quality? What would you do? It would be completely vapor. Abandon that approach. Do not use quality in the superheated region. And now you just have to march off to the superheated tables and find the state knowing V2 and P2. But you don't need to get X2. There's no quality in a superheated region. True? All right. So now, using that quality at state 2, you can get these other properties. U2, H2, S2, T2. Let's take a look now for part B. What is the work transfer during that process? So we're interested in calculating the work from initial state 1 to final state 2. 1 is our notation for initial state, and 2 is our notation for final state. True? Uh, I'm gonna want, I want you to give me the equation to calculate work 1 to 2. All right, so we use the first law. So for the process, the first law is that the change in the internal energy, neglecting changes in kinetic and potential, is equal to how much heat was transferred in minus the work out of what system? The system which consists of the steam or water, whatever you want to call it. Okay, that's our system. So it's no heat transfer, true. And so now you find that the work, 1 to 2, is equal to just the mass times the um, lowercase uh, u1 minus u2. Uh, I took care of that negative sign. You come over here, you have to evaluate u1. You evaluate u2 by doing u sub f plus x2, u sub g minus u sub f. A little work to get those those internal energies, U, and you calculate the work, 1 to 2, is equal to negative 538 kilojoules. We stop for a minute. You say, it's negative. What does that mean? 
the paddle wheels putting work into the system, not out. We are staying with our traditional sign convention that positive work is out of our system. All right. Exergy transfer accompanying the work. So now you're starting to think about exergy transfer. So how much exergy is transferred with that work where there's negative 538 kilojoules being transferred to work, meaning the direction is into the system, not out. What symbol are we asked to solve for? We're asked to solve for EW, just like W1 to 2. You could put the sim you could put W1 to 2 like that, but nobody really does. It's EW for the process. Like a lot of times people won't put the 1 to 2 there, they just put W for the process. Okay? So how do you calculate that? I'm going to pause and come around. So what it is is when you have a work transfer, it's already in that most valued form of energy, work. Remember, exergy was what is the amount of energy that can be converted into useful work? Well, work is already in that form. So it's 100% one to one. Heat is not. That's why you had that one minus T naught over TB in front of the heat transfer. So it's a fraction less than one. So the exergy transfer with the work is negative 538 kilojoules, meaning that it's, 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 a, it's the same direction as the work, meaning that the exergy is being transferred into the system, not out. Okay. Now the last one, what's the exergy destruction? How would you, first of all, what, what is our symbol? We want E sub D. It's the exergy destruction during that process. How do I solve for E sub D? Two, two methods that you think about. You either know that if I do a second law and get the entropy production, I multiply that by T naught, I have E sub D. The second way is to write an exergy balance equation. Both if done correctly, we'll get the same answer. So either you do it using that it's equal to T naught entropy generation, or you use an exergy balance equation. Let's look at the exergy balance equation. So here is our exergy balance equation. It looks like the final exergy minus the initial exergy. So that's the exergy change of the system. It could go up, it could go down. It could be zero. It's equal to the exergy transferred in with the heat. We have no heat transfer. That's why I'm not going to spend no time on that one. You have no heat transfer, there's no exergy transfer with heat if there's no heat transfer, true? But we have minus the exergy transfer with the work. Why do I have a minus in front of that sign? Because work is positive out. And if there's an exergy transfer with that work being in the same direction, it would be positive out, meaning it would de reduce or subtract from the exergy stored. Then we also have a minus the exergy destruction. Does that equation look good for an exergy balance? So what we do is we say, if I want to calculate the exergy destruction, all I need to do is calculate the change in the exergy. I'm going to leave it like that and put a minus sign on it. Minus the exergy transfer with the work. Okay, so how do I calculate the exergy change? Is that going to be the mass times U2 minus U1 plus P0 V2 minus V1 minus T0 S2 minus S1? Is that, is that what it looks like for the exergy change? Thumbs up if you agree. So we look for groups of terms to be zero. This term, is that difference of U's is not zero. But is this one zero? Why is that that middle group of terms zero? Because it's a rigid tank and the specific volumes are the same. Okay, but what we have to do is we have to get our U2 and U1. 
we have to get our S2 and our S1 and stick it into this equation. And E2 minus E1 is a positive 203.7 kilojoules. Before we go on, let's take a look at this number. It's a positive quantity. The steam now has more potential to do useful work. It's at a better capacity or improved state in which to do work because at the end of this process, the exergy of the system went up by 200 and about 4 kilojoules. True? Okay. That makes sense because it's higher pressure and warmer, hotter, right? And higher, higher quality. Now what we do is we go ahead and we say in here, we'll say, this minus E sub W is a minus negative 538. You can almost read these equations. That means there was really a 538 kilojoules of transfer of exergy coming into the system with work. And if somehow all of it would have been converted into uh, well, first of all, some of it was converted into exergy storage. How much? 200 and about 4 kilojoules, see? So the exergy that's destroyed, I know it's a little hard dealing with these minus signs, is 334 kilojoules. Our answer is positive, just chase the negative signs, and it's 334 kilojoules, which means... 538 came in, 334 were destroyed, and 204, roughly, are available for a clever engineer to exploit to now take that system toward the dead state and make work. That help? Yes, sir. Be because um, that's, that's, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know how to, it's what is the definition of our exergy uh, and if you go back to this equation, we have no expansion, it's rigid tank. So our exergy transfer with the work is simply the work. It's 100%. Uh, if you have, right, if you don't have a rigid tank and you have a change in the volume and it, and it expands against atmospheric pressure or dead state pressure, you have to take that off. That's why you have the negative sign in here. Yeah, right. Got it? 